Hey guys, it's Average and welcome back to the channel. And today we're at Headcorn uh, for a test flight in a new freeware aircraft. This is Dejing's Vans RV4. Now this is a very familiar aircraft to a lot of people. They're a kit plane, of course. And uh, one I particularly quite like. We'll talk about it a lot more once we're in the air. Uh, but this is free. And it's available on flightsim.tr. I'll be linking you a thing in the description where you can go get this for yourself without further ado. Let's go check this thing out whilst we're actually here. Uh, cockpit lever. Is that the one we wanted? Yes, it is. Okay, we'll go outside real quick, take a quick look around, and we'll get ourselves airborne for a little flight down to Shoreham before we go too far. But it's a very small kit plane, room for two people, and apparently my ponytail takes up a seat and a half, which is fair enough, okay? It's a pretty big ponytail. Which one was that luscious in real life? That'd be lovely. Either way, very small, very compact, obviously fitted out as the person would design themselves. Not a big plane. You've got that, you know, one in front, one behind seating style that makes uh, a lot of people paint these up as warbirds, of course. Otherwise, a little two-seater. A lot like the RV7. DJing made, of course, an RV7. He also did the uh, FK9 Mark IV and the VL3 Rotax uh, little aircraft he did as well. So, he's made a couple of decent freeware releases recently, or over time. Uh, meaning that as soon as I saw this one on the I had to grab it. So we're very simple aircraft in the interior. We have fuel selectors there right and left. We have our batteries and alternators. Alternator should be off right now. If you want, it should be off. There's the switches there. Got an anti-ice there. We have our magnetos here. Lights, instruments, everything else. Mixture and throttle. There's going to be a constant speed on the prop, I suspect, here. So let's make sure that is cracked slightly. And we're good to go here. Now, a lot of stuff. Uh, smoking gun. What does this do? Oh, we literally smoke. Probably look better when we're in the air. We'll turn that off. Okay, that's our parking brake there. So let's give this a crank. Okay, wonderful. Alternators and avionics all on. Not sure that is switched on for us. Of course, we actually have got functioning here. And let's just try this for a second. Look, flaps don't work where the flap brake is pulled. It's a Hanukkah miracle. And now they work. To go to where commanded. Interesting. Obviously a default sim feature, nothing dramatic about that, but it's nice to know they work. And this is a freeware plane that has working breakers. Not all. Even payware planes have that functionality. Let's get my head switched on here. So very kind of fighter jetty cockpit in this thing. Keeps your head right down there. There we go. Let's get moving on the grass. Now, it uses a lot of default elements, default instrumentation, default sounds, etc. here. It's using the sounds from the Cap 10, which are relatively appropriate for the type of engine it has. In fact, pretty reasonable, seeing as it's using an IO360 from what I recall. We'll look at the details once we're actually operational and in the air here on our way. Of course, uh, we do have a basic autopilot for it, so for comfort features, it has actually got an autopilot if you want one. And support for a GPS unit, so if you have third-party equipment you could replace that with, you probably can. In fact, I would be surprised if he makes it compatible, like he has with a number of his other ones, like the RV7s, 7 and 7A. Let's get ourselves turned out here. I'm still set to uh, online, because I've been flying with uh, an online group recently, so I'll have to get that turned off at some point. But not right now, it doesn't really matter. Although those little name tags do bother me somewhat on the horizon. So, tail comes up nice and easy, no problems there. And just ease this away from the ground. And we are good. There we go. We didn't use any flaps for that takeoff. Let's see what the smoke looks like once we're in the air. Probably exactly as we'd expect it to. Although it's very... It's a weird smoke effect, I'll be honest. I'm, I'm not a fan of that. <laughs> Let's get that turned off there. Okay, so we'll turn on course south here. Southern English countryside. So this is dual purpose for me, because we get to look at this aircraft and, you know, ostensibly review, test fly it, enjoy it. And I get to do a little bit of visual research for the final chapter of my book. <laughs> Flying over Southern English countryside. Something I'm not super familiar with myself, because I'm from the north of England. Up to north. Ugh, I feel dirty even saying that. I know I sound southern to a lot of you, but uh, I'm originally from the northwest, and I live in the People's Democratic Republic of South Yorkshire currently, so... 
I know I sound like none of those things, but I promise it's true. Although it's probably even part due to private school and working with Americans, I have a terrible accent. Made worse right now because I have braces. <laughs> you know, because I hate myself. <laughs> ah, no, the aircraft is, uh, well, they're meant to be fairly aerobatic, so let's give it a quick twizzle. Okay, no problem with that. Bring it around here. The glass is a little on the darker side, perhaps. And this is, of course, an early release. He's not finished this yet. There will be, of course, uh, changes. And I suspect we might get a version with the G3X support, especially once the SU50 SP15 one comes out. Whee! There we go. And we're on course. Nice. So, let me turn my head tracking off here so we can actually read stuff to you. And we can learn something. Now, this is, of course, the Vans RV7. They're a kit plane. Now, this is, of course, American Light Built Home Built Aircraft. Supplied in kit form by Vans from their base in Aurora, Oregon. Now, it's two people in a tandem configuration, as we mentioned. I didn't remember the word at the time. Pilot, of course, in the front seat. Passenger at the rear. Keep us flying relative level. 1,400 have been completed and flown worldwide as of 2022. So that's quite a number there. Now, uh, typically, in terms of specifications, this is typical. Your ballpark cruise speed of 200 miles an hour, so 170 knots, 75% power, 8,000 feet. And you'll be able to get a max speed of about 184 knots. So they're pretty quick, usually fairly slippery. Source speed 47 knots, so pretty low. And a range of around 510 nautical miles. This is ballpark, of course. Service ceiling of 23,000 feet ish. Now, generally, they're powered by an O360, which is a four cylinder piston engine, 180 horsepower, with a two blade fixed pitch or constant speed prop. Now, this, of course, by DJing, is using default assets and textures like the RV7 he made did, which was really good, to be fair. As a freeway plane, his RV7 was fantastic. I really, really liked it. Now, it's on course, we're turning on course. Okay, so there's a lot of rumors and details missing. He will continue to work on this. So he's going to be improving this over time. This is an early initial release. More will be added to it. And it's just for fun. It's not meant to simulate real life, so it's not exactly precisely fine. He's okay with that. And the engine is a 0360, like we mentioned, with a fixed pitch propeller. And sounds and some textures are from the Cap 10, which is fine. A paint kit is coming soon. So in terms of a free aircraft, what do we have comparing it to some payware planes? Well, visually, I'd say... It's on there with a number of payware releases. You know, could be better, could be worse. It's definitely crisp enough and definitely high detail enough. There's no major kind of blocking of uh, any curves, so it's high poly enough. Obviously, for a start, we can already use the breakers, which is more than some aircraft offerers. We have an autopilot, so we have a transponder. Useful for a lot of people. The sounds are appropriate and not awful. The canopy could open and we have some basic functionalities of, of candy. You know what? Could be a lot worse. Really could be a lot worse. I've seen plenty that are far more terrible than this. So, considering it's free, and we get a couple of liveries in there already, and the paint kit's coming out for it, really not worth ignoring. Obviously, you don't need to get rid of your uh, flight stick. It's down there. Did I just nudge something out of the way? I did. I need to put it back. It's hard to actually see you pull the breaker out without rolling the stick to the side and spinning wildly, of course. So, we'll, we'll fix that. If we're doing that snap roll. Because it definitely has a great roll rate. Which is really nice. And speaking of uh, roll rates. Let's see if I can force it into something stupid. Yes I can. Mamma mia. Pasta bake. <laughs> if you want to see what I did from the outside there. This is what we did. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm not sure what that video was called, but it's uh, unpleasant for the abdomen and the intestines. Essentially, I uh, powered back, stepped on uh, the left rudder and gave it left stick at the same time, put it into a, uh, kind of a snap spin. 
Okay, that sounds about this way. I'm not up on no fair on my aerobatics terms, so I don't pretend to know what these things are. But I've seen aircraft do that in shows. I know it's a thing. So if you know what it is, put it in the comments so I am more educated. You, my dear viewers, educate me in so many things I don't know. Aerobatics is something I don't know. Jets are something I don't know. Uh, there are lots of things I don't know. And I really appreciate my German viewers, of course, who have stepped into breach recently, helping me with my German and commenting in German and correcting pronunciation when I mentioned various things. So I love you guys for that. Uh, I learn as much as you guys do from these videos. So I consider it uh, my my life lessons fees is to upload videos in person for you guys. As we have some cloud going in here. Weather down here today in England is probably relatively pretty, but also, which is good for this time of year. We've got some mid-level cloud here, around two and a half thousand feet. So heading down towards the south coast towards Shoreham, we shouldn't be super far away, although we are turning off course. Too much time talking, not enough time flying. It's always a bugger, isn't it? So about eight percent throttle here, sitting where we should be. In fact, just drop that back to about twenty-five hundred on the RPMs. There we go. And then we'll get back on course here. Very nimble to fly. Very responsive. Like I say, I think the glass could do a being improved. It's a little bit too foggy at times. Whereas I'd like some sort of texture in it. There's little bits. I'd like a little bit of scratches maybe here or there. And it's slightly less foggy when it gets to that direct sunlight kind of attitude. Which makes it a little bit misty. Just kind of statically misty, which isn't particularly pleasant. Otherwise, wings could probably do some more detailing. The panel lining and such there, not fantastic. The fuel caps do need bumping. They just look stuck on. So that's a given. Those could be improved. It's, it's snappiness and it's responsiveness. Of course, these are used for aerobatics. It is very good. It definitely feels like it. And, oh, that rudder is super effective. It's also fairly big compared to the size of the aircraft. Blah. Now, I wonder what we have in the back seat regarding instrumentation. Sod all! Fantastic. Wait. Do not put pineapple on pizza. Really? Negative! <coughs> Absolutely put pineapple on pizza. Heresy to suggest you do not. And if you want to put something in the comments about how pineapple doesn't belong on pizza, folks, I will challenge you to a duel. Because pineapple absolutely belongs on pizza. It is delicious. Of course, it should be with ham and often mushroom. But pineapple always belongs on pizza. How dare you all for insinuating such a thing. Speed Pig 001. And it's an A320. That definitely sounds like someone who's uh, trying to be funny, but is really just riding the autopilot. Okay. Which is the direction? This is the direction. Okay. Enough of my reing and making the aircraft re. We'll actually do our jobs here and fly to uh, shore like we're meant to be doing. Now, I believe Shoreham's a default one. I didn't actually add something for Shoreham, but I know Head Corn is Burning Glue Designs, so if you were interested in that one, go check them out, of course. That is uh, Echo Golf Kilo Hotel to Echo. Golf Kilo Alpha today. So lots of kilos. Zigzag back and forth on this course so long we've missed everything. This thing is very quick. We're doing 160 right now. Oh. A little quick on the uh, RPM now. Pull that back. There we go. Exactly where we want it to be. Now, some good warbird liveries for this and some uh, plumped up texture. I think it should be rather nice. Cockpit could do with a little bit more love in terms of texturing, but not a massive amount because they are relatively plain. They're kit built planes. Panel could do with some love for sure. I think that could do with being pumped up a little bit better in terms of detail. A little, little texture going on would be quite nice. Obviously, I'm expecting there could well be a G3X version, of course. We know the new one's coming. Working title makes planes like this so much more fun to fly when you have that level of avionics support in the aircraft. Possibly support for the... Uh, 750s down there on the pedestal. I believe he did it with the uh, 
and 7a. I will check that now for you. Just to be as judicious as possible, dear viewer, let me switch my head off for a second while I look at this. And we shall pull up with the deets here on uh, old DJing's RV7. I do need to download that one as an update. Uh, da, 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 da. Yes, 750 is, oh, the G10 750 is a work in progress. The buttons don't work yet. The PMS mod is required. So it has some support, just not full support right now. But we're up to the 1.12 changelog on that aircraft. So it has had lots and lots and lots of updates to it. Uh, well worth checking out. Love the RV7s from him. I'd say they're, they're pretty good. Generally, you get the nose wheel 7A and you get the tail dragger 7. So well worth having a look at there on Flyson.to. But for us now, we are flying to Shoreham. Should be just ahead of us on the coast there. We can see the uh, channel. And that should set us up for our approach here. Nice and easy. In fact, I think I have airport visual ahead of us. It's 15 miles, but there's only so much it can be in front of us. I'm pretty sure that patch, just below the big cloud, is where we're heading to. So like I say, simple but fun aircraft. And in terms of a good one for touring, Look at this visibility, you can't beat that very much. I mean, sure it'd be nice to have slightly better visuals down to the sides without having to kind of roll the aircraft over the side, but if you really want good visuals, you could just do this. I mean, it's really hard to beat that. Oh God. It's really hard to beat this. Really, 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 really good visibility. In fact, fantastic visibility downward. I'd say unparalleled visibility downwards. Yes. Excellent. Okay. Our is building up here. All right. Should be a few minutes ahead of us now towards the coast. Definitely facking with things a little bit here with our speed. But we're okay. We'll go around this cloud. We'll be taking out the uh, new Miltech Chinook by the way, for some of its missions soon, so stay tuned for that. And we have a number of releases coming up very soon, including Update 15, which will probably have a local legend tossed in there as well. They tend to do that, and seeing as that support brings some helicopter functions, I wouldn't be surprised if it's a chopper, but we did just have one with the Caribbean, of course, so plausible it won't be. We'll have to see what we're going to get. But I know a number of developers have releases coming up in March and April, so it's going to be a busy time of year for flight sim. We'll have to stay tuned. We'll do a little bit of uh, snazzing around here at Shoreham before we land it. Just to play with this aircraft, get the full juice out of her. There we go. She'll be off our nose now. Or just to the right. go of course we do have the ability I think to pick up a course so I think we could actually no heading Bergen heading compass no I don't think we could actually do VOR navigation in this if we wanted to I don't think it has the functionality for supporting that we have got the GPS system down here though of course Quarter there, just over a quarter there, so we're okay. Okay, where's the airfield? Should be over here somewhere. Nine miles, I see it. Visual with the field, off our nose. We'll come in for a low pass, do some fun over the runway, and then we'll bring her into land. Oh, all good here. Power back. Shoreham there, I believe. 
Yeah, we're bang on course here. I say it definitely does lend its looks uh, when you go for the warbird style skins on these, but they always look a little bit silly because it is very small. So you have a big warbird design and a big bubble canopy with your head sticking out of it. But hey, how often do you get fly aircraft that are this close to being a warbird, essentially? Little tandem seating uh, sports planes. Certainly one of the more adorable looking Vans aircraft. I always like this and the RV-8 as well. Those have been my two favourites because of the tandem seating. I will say DJing has a uh, habit of getting his aircraft out and very usable before Simwork Studios do, of course. I know they're working on some other Vans aircraft right now. And speaking of Vans, I guarantee for them and for DJing's older models using the G3X and Simwork's ones using the 3X, the Sim Update 15 will be huge, of course, giving us that working title one. They're sure I'm 12 o'clock. Okay. Roll round to set up our approach here. We'll be turning off our base leg here for the run along the runway. And then we'll do some elobatics as well as I can manage them, that is. There we are. A little bit further, we'll turn left inbound and we'll be good there. Bit slower than I imagined it would be, but either way, here we go. Really, really, I know for a fact Virgin fixed my connection today, so you quiet, Sobo. Offline mode. Well, it's just a good. <laughs> told you, everything's fine. You cry, baby. Okay, really. Oh, shut up. You leave my streaming data alone. Here we go. Let's watch everything go to potato mode because Asobo said so. Look at this. It's disgusting. Screw you, Asobo. This is all your fault. Everything was fine until I got here. That's awfully awkwardly close to the ground. Yeah. Much harder to get visual reference with things when the world is starting to go potato mode. Well, we'll sod the aerobatics off, we'll put it on the ground because no one wants to look at this, do they? So like playing FSX again. Or downwind here for the grass runway. There we go. Two, four, and zero, eight, I think. So, a little bit of power here. So, engine was sounding slightly rough there. We'll give it a slight nudge of power. Two notches flaps. Low resolution shore room down below. Delightful. Love that. Engines down to idle. Just let us drop down here. Oh, look, a train on the bridge stopped because it's in British Railways, which means they suck. Really not very slippery. It's definitely very, very draggy compared to what most of these uh, Vans aircraft actually are in real life. They're very, very slippery normally. Very hard to lose speed. This one, however, it has the drag capabilities of a breeze block. go. So the server's not trying to ruin my visual experience of the game. 
room's actually quite pretty. Get off the brakes, of course, before you go too far. It will know it's over. Get ourselves taxied off the runway here and over to the parking areas. But things at least look slightly more normal. Would like the sounds to get louder, of course, when the hatch is open. The canopy even. It doesn't, it seems. Which is unfortunate, but there you go. There we go. Where's our exit off the taxiway here? Up on the right. So yeah, some improvement of detail, I think, of the panel area. Some parts of the cockpit would definitely benefit. There's a couple of breaks there, like the line on the inside of the canopy top there. And just some general smoothing of things would be appreciated. Um, flight handling wise, very nice. It lands beautifully. A bit too draggy, I'd say. Vans have a habit of being quite slippery. This one is not. Slippery is not in its verbiage at all. So possibly something worth looking at. Not meant to be super serious, amazing representation, but you know what? It does a darn good job and definitely scratches my itch for a tandem seating vans, at least in the short term. So we'll park her up here at the hangar so I don't have to look at this uh, terrible rendition of the universe thanks to a Sobo. Oh, there we go. DJing's vans RV4. Oh yeah, hang on. I can't stream data, but they're all showing us online. On that bombshell. Bye.